Okay, so we are recording now. So my name is Stacy Kimbrell, and I hope that you guys are doing well. And we are going to be going over knowing the myths and the facts about Young Living. And once again, the chat is available. I see someone wrote a question already. If you have any questions that have come up in, in your specific downline, if you have any questions regarding Young Living or Gary Young, then uh, please let me know. Also, uh, in the chat section, then we can go over. And at the end, we can go over any further ones that you guys might have. And then um, on my Facebook page today, I put a, a little tribute to Gary Young and some of his story. So that may be something helpful to read uh, in the future. I'm hoping that you have an opportunity, if you haven't already, and if you have already, to go anyhow. This year for uh, the Grand Convention, it's going to be awesome. It's actually so big that it has to be held in the um, auditor or the stadium for Utah. So that's quite amazing. There's still tickets available. You can go search on Young Living's uh, Facebook pages for people trying to share rooms or rides or whatever the case may be, or maybe someone can't go some now or go right now for some reason, and then you can uh, purchase a ticket if you haven't already. It's an awesome experience. Um, going to the farms, when you go to Young Living's uh, webpage, oops, let me see here. Uh, for underneath featured events, you can see about all the farms you go harvest, the rallies, uh, lavender days. If you happen to be in Utah, it's on the farm. You know, of course, beauty school. They still have the horse show. Of course, Gary will not be leading it this year. Maybe his son will. I'm not quite sure. Uh, the Northern Lights Winter Experience. This is so amazing, and this is part of how Raindrop started. Uh, someone may have a question on that later. Uh, the Global Cruise, I'll be going on that. If anyone is, let me know so we can make sure we hook up on there. And then once again, Grand Convention, and you can click down here. So this is all available on Young Living's website. But I tell you, one of the most changing, uh, lifestyle changing things that happened to me is when I became a silver and I got to go on the silver retreat. It was all paid expenses uh, per Young Living. And you got to plant and help harvest and see how things are grown and sit there and, and talk with the youngs. I was quite tripped out because um, obviously these are, um, it wasn't a billion dollar company back then, but nevertheless, I think the people are the same uh, no matter how much money they have or where they're at. Very humble uh, billionaires, okay? And now, of course, but humble back then. And I remember Mary was cleaning toilets and Gary was cooking pancakes and they're helping clean up and do this and walk and teach us. And I was like, uh, this seems sort of odd. I'm like, who are these really like the owners or whatever? And if you think about a lot of different businesses, you know, a lot of businesses, um, you know, they may have extra houses or jets or cars or, you know, especially when you're a billionaire and you do all these things and invest it into uh, yourself and the pleasures and reward yourself for the things um, that you've created and that you want to partake and enjoy in life. But the one thing that I truly love about the Youngs is that they are very humble people who are down to earth, realistic, and really here to support us. And I truly believe that the compensation plan has been changed so many times to benefit us. Um, I've known the Youngs now for 12 years. I met them the first time I went to convention. I went to convention 2007. It was in Washington, D.C. back then. And I went within a month and a half of signing up Young Living. I think there was only like, you know, 3,000 people maybe there then. Uh, but I remember meeting Gary for the first time and Mary, and they would literally just sit there with us and talk after the convention. Like he didn't just leave. Uh, they stayed there for hours and people would be lined up for a mile and they'd ask him questions about whatever the case may be. And um, he would just sit there graciously and answer all these questions. It was totally amazing. And he did that for years of going to convention. Now the last couple of years, obviously there's just been way too many people and you, you just can't do that with the amount of people that come to convention these days. But just an awesome experience back in the day. I, I, the one thing I feel bad about now with Young Living is that people who will not have the opportunity to meet Gary, um, and but you can hear his passion, his heart by listening to his videos, 
And I really want to start uh, putting a link to these. They'll probably do it in Team Transformation, where just a whole bunch of his recordings in there. I have a whole bunch of his transcripts and uh, some of his audios. So if you're really interested in that, please let me know. If you already have some available, let us know so we can get those posted for people to listen from. And this is truly what you want to listen to. Uh, I can tell you, though, they're not going to be compliant. So this is not something at this time that we would put on our personal Facebook pages. Uh, nevertheless, it's worth listening to. I even still have some of the cassette tapes, which I don't even know if anyone has a cassette tape player anymore, but whatever. So, um, and then once again, transcribed on paper if you want to read it. Okay. So let me get off this screen. Um, there's a lot to talk about. Um, and I don't want to do it all in a negative way because it's almost like you don't want people to know what they don't know at the same time. If you do know something then we want to make sure, you know, we don't want to create drama and grief. All right. Um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that you know, so you can be prepared. Um, it's the worst thing ever to me is when you, someone comes to ask you something and you have no clue about it. And then, you know, you feel stupid basically is what it comes down to. Right. So I'm just going to show you this short little um, video. I'll put a link later for this so you can go, you know, look at it as your leisure. If you want to do it a faster um, or more in depth, but we're just going to start um, when Gary was 24 years old. Uh, he was a logger in Canada. He grew up in uh, the U S but he moved to Canada when he was uh, 24 and he did get in an accident. I know there's a lot of controversy about this, but this is this man's story. I heard him say it from my own mouth. So um, it's not just like a hearsay, hearsay story that you've heard over the years and over the years and things get embellished. Um, I, he did not know about essential oils at this time. Uh, so the essential oils did not cure his body, but I know that he was, uh, he said he was depressed and that he uh, didn't want to live if he had to live in a wheelchair. He grew up on a farm, very physically active, on a horse and as a logger, uh, hunting for their food, you know, all that kind of stuff, okay, in a very small uh, cabin. And um, he was there to help provide for his family as well. So for those kind of personality types like myself, I would definitely be finding some robotic limbs if I had to, okay, because... I would not want to be stuck in a wheelchair if I could avoid it. Okay. So he stated that he was depressed about it. Um, and he read about fasting. He thought if nothing else, you know, maybe he'll die from it. Maybe he'll live, but whatever. Right. So he tried fasting and I know he did the Stanley Burroughs cleanse, which is, we call today the master master cleanse with the lemon, the cayenne, that kind of thing. And um, I think it was like 180 something days that he did that for. And after that period of time, uh, his body started to work again. He could feel his toes. And then he uh, graduated through physical therapy within crutches and then being able to walk again. It's a remarkable story. And uh, I personally believe it because I heard it come from his own mouth. It's not something I heard, you know, through the grapevine for over years. Um, through his journey, he started learning about essential oils. Uh, he developed the research and the studies, this is skipping. I got a better timeline for you that I'm going to put for a hand, handout for you. But I saw that someone made this, so I thought it'd be sort of nice to go through this. Um, he started uh, learning about essential oils. He slept, he told us a story one time where he slept in the distillery floor. I think he got uh, $2 and he had to sleep on the floor in order to uh, keep the fire going for the, uh, for the burner, for the distiller. And um, then he got to learn and, about the research and how to distill. So in 1982, he opened his own research clinic in California and then left California and went to Mexico because of his um, uh, controversy of what he was doing with natural. If you go back and look at some of these um, uh, TV commercials, it was totally... Uh, the FDA was totally against natural and supplements and all that kind of stuff. It's they're against it right now, but it was really bad back in the day. And you couldn't help people. You couldn't advertise you're somebody or do something. If it wasn't mainstream medical, you know, you were frowned upon. Okay. And I'm not sure 
what everyone here on this call does or what you think about things. But in the past, okay, I'll just say in the past before uh, compliancy, right? I used to get calls all the time um, for uh, people being desperate for help with cancer and with this and with that and whatever the case may be. Um, and if I help those people now with the new uh, regulations that are in place, and especially if it was on a public uh, domain, I can lose my Young Living account, I could go to jail. My husband has always been in fear since I wrote my book that I'm going to go to jail one day because of doing what I do that is against what the government says I can do. And that has always been his biggest concern. And of course, I don't step out in fear. I believe the Lord has orchestrated this. And I believe that he has gave me the desires of my heart and the information, the knowledge to be able to uh, do what I do with sharing about health and nutrition and chemical awareness. And of course, uh, essential oils and the benefits of vitamins and whatnot. So I don't step out in fear of everything, anything, but you will find in some of the records that Gary's been arrested a number of times for um, treating cancer, for example. So um, my brother has cancer right now, and he did ask me for advice uh, of what to do. But if for some reason he was mad about it or his wife was or his children or for someone in public, I could get in trouble for that. And I could possibly go to jail for it. And that's just me, okay? Uh, I'm like small fries. And so uh, Gary's putting his neck out there and he's been in jail a couple times in life because of practicing medicine where they said he was not, should not be doing so, okay? So that's something that you'll read that you can hopefully have the understanding about right now. Um, Let's see, he devoted his life to producing pure quality essential oils in 85. I wasn't even out of high school yet. 1989, uh, let's see, he started his uh, one quarter farm in Spokane, Washington with his first distiller. Um, I think we have a better picture in a second. I'm gonna show you um, one acre, slightly less than a football field of his first farm, hand planting all of these plants himself. Do you know when he started Young Living, he actually started as a, a, a co-op and he would hand write on the labels lavender and then he would actually physically write the envelopes and then mail it to people if they weren't picking it up. He did that whole production by himself. Um, he purchased 160 acres in St. Mary's in Idaho for distilling the oils. Um, 1992, he purchased it. I remember he told us a story about he didn't have enough money um, for a farm and a guy was looking for a truck and he never used the land anyhow and he traded his truck for the land and had to leave walking because he had no vehicle. So that was sort of an interesting, there's so many interesting stories. I have notes on all this stuff. I got to find them and like try to get out of there, all this stuff together. This was Young Living's first corporate office in 1993. Um, and you can see the little loading dock and his little truck you know, bringing in the equipment. Let's see here. Gary purchases his own farm in Mona. And let's see, many different plants. Yeah, so they were doing different plants at that time. This was a second Young Living Farm. You can see them below. This picture may be hard to see down here with the distillers, but one of the stories that you, um, I see, I think there's a, there was a question for, is someone asked me about this, is that there was advertised, or it was put out there that one of, uh, that Gary killed one of his workers, okay? So when you look at these distillers, Gary Young has made all of these distillers himself. He has cut the metal, he has welded it. Uh, everything that was in the production that he could do himself, uh, he did do uh, for each one because he wanted to make sure they were done correctly. Unfortunately, underneath the pressure of one of them, it had um, exploded, and when it did, it hit one of the workers and it killed the worker, okay? So obviously that is a very unfortunate situation. Um, but Gary Young did not get an ax and kill him or put him in the distiller and cook him, okay? So there's a difference when the media comes out of, of what's going on here and there's stories 
there's a smidge of truth to it, but not all of it is truth. So we really need to have discernment for uh, what we always hear, no matter what, of course. Um, and there's always two sides of the story, and there could be uh, truth on both sides or not at all. But that's where, unfortunately, um, you know, it's for people to really try to research and learn for. It. So that's an example of one of the cases uh, that happened as well. But at this point, they had two farms. 1996, they moved their corporate office to a former um, school building. Let's see. And this is when Young Living expanded into Australia and Japan. I forgot what year that is, but it's on my next handout, so we'll go there and see in a second, which is exciting. 2000, um, so the wolfberries, that's so interesting. Um, Dr. Um, Dr. Chow, oh gosh, what was his name? I just forgot. Gary met Dr. Chow, um, and his daughter was a chemist. Her name was Su Chow, and she used to work for Young Living for years. She just retired a couple of years ago, but they made a, uh, a pact to work together, and Gary had purchased the Ningxia Farm, which is in Ningxia, China, which is where the wolf berries are produced. And we, which is different because they're, they get watered from the Himalayan mountains. So we have all the Himalayan uh, salt minerals that go into these. So they're not the regular goji berries. I don't know if you know or not, but we can grow goji, goji berries right here in Flint. But I don't know about you, but I really don't want any Flint goji berries, especially with our nasty uh, lead water we got going on, right? Uh, but these wolf berries are, the real name is lychee and barbarium. Sometimes people call them goji berries, uh, but ours are called ninja, ninja wolf berries. And it's from the ninja province in China, and we have a patent on those. Um, they have 17 amino acids, they have the essential polysaccharides, they have uh, the minerals and vitamins we need. For a whole cup of wolf berries is um, 16 grams of protein. It's totally amazing. Okay. I love that. Ninja Red's my favorite product. 2000 Young Living uh, purchased the farm in France. And one thing that was, uh, I wish I had my years on this, um, but it's probably like uh, maybe six years ago or something, maybe five, uh, probably six, um, six or a little bit more. Uh, there was a virus that went through all of France's uh, farms and they mostly produced lavender and it killed Young Living's farm and all the other local farms. Luckily, we already had our lavender in St. Mary's, so we still had lavender, otherwise we wouldn't have any, uh, because most of the lavender that's ex um, exported uh, into the U.S. is from France. So uh, they had, it was a virus that went through all the crops, and so they had to redo that. I know part of what he used to help rebuild the soil and let it rest for years was digize, and they spray digize all over. And then the Young Living's Farms, on some of them, they have their own uh, fertilizer with the worm composting, which is totally amazing if you ever get a chance to see that. I have pictures somewhere. But uh, they have worm farms that, you know, uh, of course, defecate and use it as a fertilizer. They have the, uh, the liquid that comes down to another vet, and then that's used to spray. And the other topsoil of the manure from the worms uh, the castings, I believe they call them, that gets spread in the fields as well. Um, so our farms, which I'm not really at this point, but I'll just say it now, uh, there is no chemicals on any of our farms. We have never bought a farm that's ever been tapped or treated before. Um, and it's been like fresh soil that has not been tested. It's been tested. It's never to have anything on it. And we don't use anything now on it. We use our own castings. And I know they use digize oil blend to uh, if there's any problems with bugs and that kind of pesticides. And I use that in my own garden when I had one. I haven't had one lately. Let's see, peppermint works exceptionally well as well. They moved to the new corporate headquarters in Lehigh, Utah in 2003. And then uh, Gary and Mary chose to uh, open the farm in Ecuador. Um, I remember back then, a lot of people were upset about they were going to Ecuador to open a farm. I'm like, I don't know why it's any of your business. 
I don't know, it's so sort of odd to me because it's like if someone's gonna do something, it's not your money, so what are you complaining about, right? Um, but they actually physically moved there in 2005. And if you ever get to see the farm uh, photos, it was totally untapped. It's on the equator. The soil is so rich and pure and it just grows things. Like when you literally, like in Ecuador, when you grow a scallion, which we all know what that looks like, it's literally bigger than a leek, okay? Um, everything is like gigantic and there's no miracle grow. It's just because we're on the equator, the weather, the soil is so awesome. Like I remember I got a, um, what are those things called? The acorn squash, you know, usually in the US they're like this big. Over in Ecuador, they were bigger than my head. It looked like a watermelon. And like you only need like a third of that thing per meal, right? If that, where usually I'll cut the whole thing and like cut it in half and have one, one day or one the next day because I love eating those. Uh, everything is like gigantic over there. Uh, papayas are like footballs are like this big and it's just amazing. So um, the soil over there is just so incredible um, and how, how they grow things. But one of the most popular things was the copaiba and the okatea. Um, and okatea I just miss so much because that is one of the main oils that really helps to help maintain normal, healthy blood sugar levels. And um, it works great. Okatea was always in uh, the water jugs of the kids in the Ecuadorian school to uh, make sure they maintain uh, good health. Let me go to the next one here. 2000, let me just see here, 2005, let's see, uh, expanded into the UK. Let me go next here. 2007, uh, construction was completed um, at the shipping facility. Oh my gosh, only 107,000 square feet. I wish I knew where we're at right now. I know it's a lot more than that. Uh, we used, to, we used to be able to go there and they give us these little samples. I still have one actually. It was like lemon lime shampoo or something like that. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, and then 2009 was going into Oman. Uh, there's a great story behind uh, Gary going into there. If you have not read his book, um, The Frankincense Trail, that is a true story. Um, so you'd want to uh, read that one day to really see not only did the things before even biblical time, um, but how they still do things now and how it's harvested and the value that was placed on frankincense. It's just amazing. It's a great story. Yes. And uh, in Egypt, when Gary went there and he did a lot of studying uh, over there and going throughout the country and learning about the practices and how people use the oils. Obviously, we already know the Egyptians were very advanced. Um, totally amazing what they could do in their time with uh, nothing electrical like we have today, other machinery and building pyramids and whatever. But they literally had oil distillers, and of course, they had uh, value in that. And it's all through the Bible as well, if you didn't know already. But uh, the history of using uh, oils. Um, Go, I mean, what was it? Mesopotamia was like um, 3000 BC, maybe that was China. Um, it goes back to before Christ. So uh, we'll have to go look at those dates. Let's see here. And then Young Living today, obviously these are the old labels, but Young Living has just grown so much. Um, I believe it's over 100,000 new members a month and that's like for the last almost three years now. Um, we're not going anywhere. Young Living has been here for over, uh, now we're at the 25 year point, which is totally amazing and, and exciting. And there's a reason why the purity of Young Living is, um, is amazing. And I, you may not totally understand it or, cause if you haven't been to the farms and that kind of stuff, but I promise you the love that is put into this and the the care, the concern for your health and mine and our skin and our hair and our wrinkles or whatever the case may be, uh, these oils are therapeutic. And Young Living, if you just, if it, you almost can sum it up very easily. Um, I don't know what oils or supplements you really like that we're out of right now, but when we're out of peace and calming forever, I mean, 
I don't know if it was like a year or two years. It was a very long time. And I had a few bottles left and I'm actually just finishing one of my old ones that have like the old label from like five years ago. Um, and I'm just finishing the rest of that. And we we're out of stock for years of this. Okay. You have to understand that we could just like other essential oil companies go source the oils and just go get them from anywhere and put them in the bottle. They should be able to smell the same but are they going to be therapeutic? And so Young Living goes through so many testings that are unnecessary, but it is Gary's standard and it's gonna stay even though he's no longer here anymore. Uh, Young Living, of course, Mary's still running the company. There's Jared Turner who's made a commitment. Uh, Lauren has to uh, keep up with Gary's standards, values, morals, and practices. So it's very exciting to know that um, nothing is going to change with our purity, but we are going to be out of oil sometimes because there's you can't control Mother Nature and the weather, right? You can't control if you're going to have a flood or a virus or this happening or whatever. Back in the day, um, when Young Living and Duterra split, I was here then, and actually Dr. Hill is the one who taught me about how to help my body back in the day. And because Gary Young was in Ecuador with the farms and living there, Dr. Hill was running the business in the States and then traveling around uh, teaching people, um, you know, locally, right? So if he was remotely anywhere nearby, like New York, Chicago, Michigan, anywhere, Ohio, I was there because I was newly into it. Um, I've already had tremendous success with uh, my situations. And so I was just down for everything. So if you saw Dr. Hill right now, he would definitely know my name and know who I am. When they left Young Living, uh, which I'll tell you why in a second, um, I have got numerous emails and calls from them specifically to ask me to come work for them and leave Young Living. Obviously, their value and moral standards are outrageously absurd to me, and there is no way on this planet I would ever go use or work with doTERRA because of their practices. They uh, do not line up uh, at all with any kind of value and morals from what I've seen. Now, what I do know for a fact is that during this time before they left, uh, we were out of helichrysum. Our own farm had the helichrysum crop come in and it was not to Gary Young's standards per his testing to be therapeutic, okay? And if you go research on Google, what Helichrysum does, if you don't know already, it is totally amazing, okay? Um, I can't say right now, but it is amazing what helichrysum does. And we turn down our own oil. So you have to think, like, we have to realize is that we had someone, the farmers, our farmers, they planted the helichrysum. Someone had to water this stuff. Someone had to spray it with the worm casting. Someone had to do all these things, right? And then they paid them, had the machines to harvest this, and then found out through all the testing, which is a process and a time you're paying someone to do this, that it was not up to Gary Young's standards and Young Living standards. And so, therefore, it was not therapeutic. So, they actually did not market that to us and they sold it to somebody else, okay? My thought was, can't we just like take our chances and buy it for a half off or whatever, because I'm sure it's still good, but the answer was no. So we were out of helichrysum for over a whole year, because you have to wait till the next crop comes in and pray it comes in good. But we could have got helichrysum from anywhere. We could have kept the helichrysum that we already invested into, and I say we as Young Living, okay? But we didn't. So I know that was very upsetting to Dr. Hill and his little group of five, okay? And then the other big one, was Young Living was losing big time money because the, one of the main oils in all the skincare products was out of stock. And so obviously women who are very into their skincare regimen, we can't buy it now. And we were out for months with this skincare regimen, uh, the oil that goes in there. And so... Um, we lost a lot of money from those sales and then people had to go find something else and they don't want to come back because what if it goes out of stock again and you can't do this and no one wants to mess with their beauty, right? So 
that was a big problem. And I know because Gary Young told me himself when I was in Ecuador and he was teaching us uh, gold and platinum leaders are there at the time that um, some of the problems that were going in internally in the company that he did not know of because he was in Ecuador until they found out, of course. And he said they were very upset because they wanted to source these cheap oils to put it in here so we could make money and not lose money. So Duterte's um, leaders are not built on a firm foundation, obviously. Otherwise, I mean, Dr. Hill knew nothing about essential oils before Gary hired him in as his protege to teach him everything he knows to help be a support and a benefit to Young Living, the members, and growing the business. But all they did was sabotage it. So it's good they're gone. It's unfortunate that we have them as a competitor because... Uh, that's very rough and difficult for especially we knew all these people back then you had their phone numbers You saw them all the time. It was like a big family. So I I mean, I know how hurt I was I can't even imagine how bad it was for the youngs, you know so um, That's that question. Let me see here Didn't make me cry. Oh Robin, I'm sorry Um Okay, I don't know how people read these things and talk at the same time, so I'm sorry. I gotta look over here. I'm not that talented like that. Uh, yeah, Duterra has zero integrity. Uh, they they still baffle me with all the things that they have done. It's just outrageous. Anyhow, um, people say that Gary did. Uh, one of the reports on the internet is that Gary didn't really have a logging accident. He really wasn't paralyzed. And uh, they've searched all the hospital records from 1973 and they can't find anything. I'm just like, if you got that much time on your hand, I don't know what to say. I really don't. I wish I had the amount of time you got. But it's outrageous what some of these people are saying and doing. Um, let's see here. Here's a list. I'll, public, I'll post this list. Um, I love the whole thing with, in 2009, Young Living, uh, you know, started the Young Living Academy in Ecuador. Um, gosh, there's, I think it's 12 graduating classes, all right, and the last one, and I, I know some other ones, are 100% graduation rates. I mean, this is like unheard of. Um, I love how they do the stuff on the farm, what's not picked, or the excess on Young Living's uh, farm in Ecuador. The workers get to keep, and they can use it for themselves, the family to go uh, sell it, you know, the market to help raise money for themselves. I mean, it's just so amazing. Okay. Okay, we only have farms in the US, I guess, answer that. Why did so many people go to David Hill, or did they? Um, one of the questions is, why did so many people um, jump ship and go to Deuterra um, with David Hill? I don't really know the answer to that. I, I had some really good friends that went and it was quite shocking. I know that they were promised, um, like one of the things was um, if I left, whatever my income at that time was, they would match that income for the first, I've forgotten now, maybe it was like nine months to a year as I'm building my team. And then they would, as people came in, they were gonna put them straight underneath you know, the main people that are going to really help build the build, build your business. And they were going to, they would keep my current income through Young Living that I was already receiving. So it really wouldn't be a loss. And then it was a startup company. So a lot of people really want to get in on startup companies. Um, I just have a, I have a personal thing and I guess upset and frustration with the whole situation because I was there then and I knew Justin and I knew Dr. Hill, and I knew Dr. Or David Sterling, and I knew these people. So it was really, um, as I said, I don't, I can't even believe how the, the youngs felt, but how I felt. And then it's like right afterwards, you know, when they get their own building, they buy the building right next to Young Living. So like, how do you drive to work every day? You know, if they're in a different part of Utah, then whatever, out of sight, out of mind. But every day you got to see, you know, what just happened, and then to move forward um gosh this was in 2007 i believe don't quote me but i believe it was in 2007 uh, i was speaking at convention that year 
And three days or three or four days before convention, the FDA came in with a nominous tip about illegal practices um, in Young Living and shut down Young Living three days before convention. Now that was a hot mess, obviously, right? And we got everyone who was speaking got calls and got made sure that, um, you know, what, what you're going to speak on, you got to make sure it's, you know, lined up straight, whatever, uh, because, um, you know, the FDA was going to be there present. They, they had a number of people from the FDA there when, okay, I'm sorry. They closed it down. Young Living stayed there overnight with the FDA. Uh, they complied with everything they wanted. They found that their, the charges were false. They opened Young Living back up. Of course, Young Living scurried to get everything to the convention hall to set up and all that kind of stuff. And the convention went on as planned. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you the whole story. Um, once again, I was one of the speakers back then. And so everyone who was speaking, <clears throat> they called and let know that, um, you know, we have to watch our P's and Q's. The FDA is going to be everywhere in there monitoring. Uh, back in the day, our conventions, you could speak freely and talk about what you use for MS and what you use for diabetes. And we had all the scientific data and the facts and all the clinic reports to uh, verify and see what was happening in people's testimonies. And so, gosh, you just got to learn so much. Now, now it's really obviously mum's the word, right? You can't, all you can basically say is these oils smell so good. <laughs> you know, you can't uh, say as much as we used to be able to say. So you really have to do your own research with it. Um, but that was a, uh, that was like a low blow, you know, let's say, because, uh, it was timed very well to, in order to have the FDA come in three days before convention, but there's just been some practices that are, uh, really not, um, honoring and they could have done better, uh, with that. And I've just come into a lot of, I have a, a hurt heart over it, obviously, but I do have reason as well, and um, I still have compassion for other people. But I've come into a lot of situations over the years um, regarding Deuterra that is just, um, it's just not ethical with the things that they should be doing and upholding to a, some kind of standard. So that's unfortunate, but that's what it was. But uh, once again, I was there back then uh, during that time. Um, It did break Gary's heart when that whole thing happened, and he was not going to sue uh, Deuterra at all. But after the, it was like a, it was like the com next convention. Um, like they left a couple years before, and then when when the FDA came in the three days before convention, he announced at convention that he was going to uh, press charges against uh, Deuterra and the five main leaders. Uh, for stealing uh, secrets and, you know, all the different things. Uh, don't, I mean, you can go look it up, whatever it was. But, um, but previous to that, he was not going to sue because he just wanted uh, peace and energy and move forward. But obviously that really had to hurt. That's like, you know, that's like if you uh, adopt a child and they turn around and sabotage you or kill you or do whatever. It's like, it just, the concept is not even there to make sense over greed and money. So. But, you know, not everyone's the same way. So that's what that is. Um, Pam said, it sounds like there was a difference of opinion about managing uh, the company from profit perspective. Yes. Um, and so the people who left are mostly money oriented. Um, so yes, that, I mean, that would be a, probably a better way of saying that. Okay, let me go up here. I saw a question earlier. Um, I have a, back in the day, there was something called Quack Watch, and that's not out anymore. Um, through a lawsuit, they had to remove their website, but of course, they're still out there just underneath different names. But I have the rebuttal from Young Living, uh, because um, Stephen Barrett was in charge of that, and he was adamantly against anything natural. And um, so, if you have some other... Um, questions that need to be answered, then we can go through there. But if you really want to have that document, but it's not necessary. Uh, one of the questions is, um, someone gets a lot of questions regarding uh, Gary murdering his baby. 
So um, him and his wife at the time had a water birth. And what they claim is that Gary held the baby underneath the water for an hour and the baby drowned. And that's what the reports on the internet say. Um, Gary said he did not kill his, um, and actually, where's the book at? Hold on a second. Um, Gary told us all, because um, one time, as I said, when we we're in Ecuador, he said, if you have any questions, I want you to ask them now so you can have an understanding um, from my point of view and all that kind of stuff. So people were honest and said, well, I heard this and this is being said and this is what this says. And, you know, how do we respond to this? You know, what's the best uh, answer for these things? So he said that um, he did try to have a water birth with his child. Uh, he said he did not hold the baby underneath the water. He said, why would I? You know, and I guess I don't know why you would either. And um, and he said that the baby did die, but it was not because of drowning or water. It wasn't because of his hand that that happened. It was a natural death. Um, he was not charged with any kind of um, criminal activity or manslaughter for killing his baby. But nevertheless, when you go look online, you will see those things out there. Um, let's see here. In this book right here, uh, can you guys see this? Yes. Can you see it? Okay. So this is Gary, uh, or D. Gary Young's book, uh, The World Leader in Essential Oils. Um, Mary Young put this together. Obviously, Gary helped. I'm on page 149. I think Steve's on page 150 or vice versa. Um, so it's sort of fun. But this book, it's like this is like the real timeline. And you got to read this book. If you don't have this already, you got to buy it. It's like $24. And you got to just, or actually on Amazon, I think it's like 16 or something. And you just got to get this and read this because you will learn so much about uh the youngs um in their heart and what's happened and there's proof and there's um x-rays and there's mris and all these different things that you can see for yourself and of course i always just ask them to pray about it and you know see what you come up with with the discernment um yeah everyone needs to read this book um Okay, this complains that young living is using poor practices and killing off different plants. Okay, this one I have not heard before, um, but it says there are, com there are complaints that young living is using poor practices and killing off different plants. Farming practices. Okay, so like the balsam trees or something like that. Yes, okay. So, um, with the balsam, he bought a, a farm full of balsam trees. And he is planting uh, more than what he is harvesting. He does try to adhere the young living to uh, obviously the environment and what we can do. But when you, uh, I guess I wish I could say things in here. Um, the benefits of balsam fir are so amazing we're actually out of stock right because they have a quota of what they do for harvesting and um and they're not going to go over what they can do before they can replenish the land it's just like um poly santo in ecuador the poly santo tree you can't just diffuse you have to wait until it's it falls to the ground on its own and then you have to wait i don't know if it's another couple of years before you can even harvest the the plant those plants live for like i don't know how many hundreds of years old so like when we're out of poly santo we can't harvest anymore but we like i was there for the the planting of we planted poly santo trees um i planted over 200 alang, alang trees for harvesting so we do everything that young living does to distill their plants and their trees and whatnot uh, they are replenishing way more than what they are um, taking down or harvesting from. Just one second. 
Uh, the book that everyone needs to read is called D. Gary Young, The World Leader in Essential Oils. Mary Young wrote this, and it's on our Young Living website, so you can order along with your order, or you can go right on to um, Young uh, Amazon and buy it. Let me get it real quick. Hold on. Uh, do I think okay let me show you what it looks like just so you guys can see it here um, so it looks like this um, not that I buy it from eBay but I, I know you can get it on Amazon as well but this is what it looks like this is an awesome timeline from beginning to when the book was written um what year was it again 1915 uh, it's from uh, gary's birth to 1915 i mean 2015 excuse me um and it's a complete timeline of his life Yeah, oh, it said Discover LSP as well. Um, if you're looking for less expensiveness, it is on Amazon. If you have Prime, it's free shipping. And you can get it in your virtual office. So, which, harsh rumors to be spread. I always like Gary so much for soon. Um, I don't, I mean, I know everyone here doesn't know me, and I know there's a few people that know me and have known me for years, like uh, Robin uh, Nettles is on here, and she's known me, I don't know when Robin signed up, but I think we signed up around the, the same time, and that's like maybe, I've been 12 years, I'm not sure how long Robin has been. And I know there's a lot of you here, and I think that, um, I, of course, I'm not perfect, and um, I don't claim to be, um, but I really do my best, and, and back in the day, because I've been with Young Living for 12 years, back in the day, I used to straight get hate mail on a regular basis because of teaching about chemical awareness. I was teaching about tricosan and um, antibiotics and, you know, whatever the case was, tricosan's in the antibacterial soap, you know, um, about toothpaste and mouthwash and the chemicals are in them. Uh, I taught about that 12 years ago. And I used to get hate mail about that kind of stuff, teach about propylene glycol and what it's in and how it's harming to the body and so forth. Um, I don't get too much hate mail anymore, but I think if someone, um, if someone, if someone, if you guys know me or know me uh, personally or my heart, it is to help anyone and everyone. And my only main fault is that I don't have enough time in the day and I can't seem to answer everyone's questions that I get. And so for that, I'm sure I could have a bad name for not responding to messages, but it's literally impossible to respond to all the messages I get. I just, I, I'm only one person and I can't, I even have an assistant and I still can't get it done. So I don't even know what to say. <clears throat> but when there's people who speak untruths against you, which happens, has happened to me and is still happening today. And there's like a few people who constantly spread lies and rumors about me. And I tell you what, it is, it's hard to do. And I do know Jesus, so that's what I have to rely on. But it is hard to um, love your enemies and to just say, why are you doing this? Like there's literally no reason. You guys can see I got earrings on today just because my shirt happens to match. And my husband just gave me this necklace for Mother's Day. Uh, but I don't care about what I look like. I really don't care about my hair. I don't care if you come over to my house and it looks like I'm breeding rabbits, but it's not because it's dog hair. Not that I don't try to clean up my house and do things. Um, but I feel like I'm a humble person and I try to do my best and help people wherever I can, whether in my group, not in my group, whether they have money, whether they don't have money. I don't care whether it's two in the morning. Okay. But yet, there are certain people for no reason except for out of jealousy that are constantly spreading mistruths about me. So you, you just have people who can be jealous and greedy and that kind of thing um, or for whatever reason. And I treat everyone exactly the same. So there's no reason for it. So I'm sort of just like small fries. So you can imagine when you have someone with a, a big company 
who does not like the practices of which they do and just constantly trying to tear people down uh, and trying to tear them down so they can get in trouble and so this can happen and this can happen and whatever because they don't want them to practice. And there's, they're doing so much good um, to really help people. It's just not the way they feel it should be done. I'm sure all of you, especially the people on the call, that if you're into using oils or learning about natural medicine and that kind of stuff, I'm sure you've got some flack or kickback from your family or your friends or coworkers who think you're absolutely nuts and uh, they don't value your opinion in it and they don't have any problem telling you so and it may even cause a relationship um, over that. So um, it's unfortunately the same kind of thing. Okay. Um, okay, what else do I have on my list here? If you guys have any other things that have come up in your downline, please mention them um, in the chat section so I can go over it. So once again, we're out of stock of stuff. If we were any other normal oil company, we would never be out of stock, okay? Because we could make money all the time by just putting any oil in there. Uh, but that's not true. When people come over or they say, well, you know, I don't, um, I don't think yellow means for real or it doesn't matter if you get this kind or whatever, I always ask them to bring their oils from whatever company they have. And I'm sure most likely I have the, the equivalent in, in Young Living. And I put either a little sticky note on, around it or I have them hold it and I have them, uh, I switch them up and have them close their eyes and I have them smell this one and smell this one. I said, now which one do you think smells pure? And they're like, well, this one sort of smells like perfume or alcohol. It's okay, look and see which one that is. And it's always theirs, okay? I've never had it be the other way the, all the time I've done this in the last 12 years. And I said, well, if you really want to know the difference, they're like, I do, and they're all adamant. It's okay, then you're going to try it. So they're like, I don't want to taste it. And I'm like, you have to because you're complaining. And so you need to learn for yourself what the truth is. So I always, um, I, I have them try Young Living first. Um, and not to do a whole drop, but you know, put your finger on the top, right? And just put it on your tongue and have them taste it. Of course, when you do that with lavender, for example, it's going to be quite strong. Lavender is not my favorite in the world personally to drink or taste, you know, but nevertheless, can you, what can you taste? Do you taste earth and the plant or do you taste a chemical, right? So I wait for a little bit, you know, like five minutes, let them have a sip of water and I have them do it with the oil they have all of a sudden they don't want to try it anymore but i make them try it anyhow so i have them put a drop on their finger and then put it on their tongue and um and then they like sort of freak out they're like oh my gosh it tastes like alcohol or it's horrible can i have a napkin and they like wipe their tongue one lady just recently brought over a lavender oil and it was blue i'm like lavender oil is not blue or purple whatever you want to call it it's it's like a clear oil She's like, well, yours is wrong because uh, the plant is blue. I said, okay, that's not how it works. You know, so she's assuming that Young Living's is wrong because the, it's not the same color. Like all the, most of the oils are clear in their color. Um, so it's, you know, you know, we have to make sure people are aware of that. Hold on. Okay. Um, let's see. We have 20 farms and with distillate, uh, distillers. I don't know if you guys know or not, but you can go work at any farm or go experience them. I'm telling you, you'll have the time of your life, bring your family and your friends there or your kids or whatever, and just really go experience how this is run. I've been on the Ecuadorian farm, and if there's some kind of mispractices or shystiness going on, I've been there for a total of two months, okay? And one of the months was staying at the farm every single day. So I had the whole farm to myself, basically, uh, with the guy who was uh, testing all the oils, with the harvesting, helping doing all the different parts. And, you know, at some point, someone's going to mess up and say something that's not right or whatever if there's practices that are going on wrong. But I was there for actually over 30 days straight. And it was just amazing. There is no mispractice or malpractice or shistiness or shadiness going on uh, there. Let's see. Um, a lot of learning, jealous. Okay, so the work. Okay, let's see. If there's any other questions here. 
Hello, transparency. I am obviously um, in in Ecuador. We use uh, we can have uh, vitamin IVs. Okay, I'm sure you, most of you guys know what that means. But actually, I guess it's in Ecuador. We could probably say it. the Nova Vita Clinic. They do uh, intravenous IVs with essential oils. I've had 28 of them. So I'm still here, I'm still alive. I've used the oils vaginal and rectal and topical and through inhalation. You never use them inside the ear. You can use them around the ear and down here. And you can even put a drop on a cotton ball and put it in your ear, but make sure it's not juicy. Uh, but you never pour oil inside your ear. Uh, and I've used oils inside my eyes on accident and on purpose. Um, so you can use these so many different ways for different things um, and without harm to the body. Like if you didn't see it, I just did something about going on a cruise and how to make your sea legs or travel sickness blend. Um, I have that problem really bad in any moving vehicle, it doesn't matter what kind. And um, there's a blend of uh, oils that make that not happen for me at all and others of course or i can take dramamine which is awful and um all the i read all the side effects to dramamine on that page which to be honest with you i didn't realize there's that many and so uh, you know what is my choice the the there's to me there has been no harm for my family my children were eight and twelve when we first started um and using the oils so I think that's like uh, amazing. Um, I just went to the dentist recently because my son and I were wrestling and uh, he hit me in my chin. Of course it wasn't, you know, we, we wrestle and play because I'm sort of like a tomboy. And it cracked my tooth so I had to go get it fixed. And I, I have no plaque still. Like I, I, I'm, I go to the dentist like I don't even know how often, right? And for a family to not have the oral health issues uh, that normal people have because of using these mouthwash. Uh, I make the mouthwash that I use. Uh, my husband uses, my other son uses the mouthwash, and we use the toothpaste, one with the blue label. That's my one I like the best. Um, you know, I haven't had any issues. I just turned 50. Do you know what I mean? I've used no prescriptions or store bought medicines in 12 years because of my lifestyle changes. I'm not gonna say it's just because of essential oils or Ninja Red or anything like that, but because of my lifestyle changes and no more chemicals and my foods, my drinks, my lotions, my potions, all that kind of stuff, I am completely in my home chemical free. Now, if I go out to a restaurant, I refuse to eat anything that could have MSG or neurotoxins in it. I'd rather not even eat or I'll just eat avocados or some tomato or whatever, right? Um, and some of the food, obviously could possibly be GMO. It doesn't mean it's always going to be organic, but I'm definitely not going to compromise with seasonings and neurotoxins. But, you know, I just turned 50. Um, and I'm thankful for what I have learned about in the, in the last years, you know, it was October, 2007. I learned uh, August uh, or no, July 27th. I learned about health and nutrition and chemical awareness. And it's, it's changed our whole family's life, which has just been a total blessing. So it's very exciting about what we can do for ourselves. But wholeheartedly, um, I totally believe um, in Young Living, the practices of Young Living, um, the reason why they do things. And there's always room for growth and improvement because, you know, uh, 10 years ago, uh, there was no studies that folic acid was not the best choice. And if you had something called MTHFR, uh, which I do, then it's very toxic to people who have that. Uh, but once Young Living learned about that, and it was, I don't know, don't quote me, let's say it was four years ago, I don't know. Um, you know, they took out of, they took the folic acid out of Super B, and they only have methylated uh, B in there now, which is what we need and our body can assimilate. Um, so there wasn't studies on that before. So as people learn and grow, Young Living is is growing with that and learning how to make their products better. This is, this is regarding supplements. Their oils already have no problems with it. Um, but their, their supplements, if there's something they find astray, 
or is brought to their attention. They're learning how to make it in a better way and use better products. Um, I was really concerned when Young Living back in the day was changing their Ninja Red formula because their Ninja Red formula is what helps my cognitive function greatly. It is the highest antioxidant. I've been drinking it for 12 years straight, um, anywhere from six to two ounces a day. And um, I have done that for 12 years straight, and I, I will not stop because of the benefits it does to me cognitively. My, my bladder issues um, for all my changes I've made over this time have been resolved, so that's a blessing. But um, I still suffer greatly with dyslexia, and uh, I don't accept these labels, okay? But I do have dyslexia. There's not much I can do about that. Um, I do have uh, a little bit of OCD. I do have control specialist problems, and I do have, uh, I know I'd be labeled as ADD. Um, it is what it is. I learned how to deal with these things and to do the best. But there's things that I take through my nutritional uh, foods and supplements that literally control how bad my dyslexia is. So uh, that's a blessing. So back to what I was saying is, when Young Living was changing their formula for Ninja Red, I was quite freaked out because, uh, you know, I definitely don't want to go back to where I used to be. So what happened with that is um, I talked to Mark Schroeder one time. I said, you know, why are we changing this? Like, what's going on? And he said, Apricot was in the Ninja Red formula before, and they had to take it out. And I'm, the reason why they took it out is because they the FDA was going to require them to put three times the amount of preservative in there having apricot. So Young Living reformulated it, found uh, just as great ingredients that they wouldn't have to put uh, the preservatives, uh, put more preservatives in the Ninja Red. Per the FDA, a product either has to have a preservative or it has to be heat pasteurized. We know that if it's heat pasteurized, that you just killed all the enzymes in the live bacteria and benefits and probiotics and everything else in there. So we definitely don't want anything heat pasteurized, okay? So they have sodium benzenoid in there. Sodium benzenoid is in my book as not one of the best ingredients. Now there's a natural form of sodium benzenoid from grape leaves and there's a chemical component. Um, I was told that Young Living uses the least amount of the natural version um, and that they can get away with using, right? So the benefit, I mean, they're not obviously trying to give us a preservative that would do damage to us uh, nonetheless. But before I even knew what sodium benzenite was, Ninja Red had changed my life completely in two and a half weeks. So personally, I don't care if there's sodium benzenite in it anymore because the, that out, uh, the benefits outweigh the sodium benzenite in it, if that makes sense. I'm hoping that's making... Uh, sense uh, to you. So um, there's checks and balances with everything, but I am very thankful that Young Living is a company that is growing with the times. And once again, when they find something that may be a little bit of a concern or an issue, um, like the um, folic acid in, in the B vitamin, then they uh, change that forth um, and, and change that product to be a, a wholesome product that would be uh, better suited with the knowledge that we have today. So that is really uh, exciting to me um, that they have that kind of value system. Um, I, when I met Jared a couple of years ago in Ecuador, I said, listen, I know that uh, you don't know me and whatever. I said, but I am so frustrated that people in power and young living keep basically screwing over the youngs. And I said, are you here for the long, long haul? Are you, are you here dedicated to Gary Young and to his mission? And he said, absolutely. He said, you know, I don't need to tell you anything, obviously. Um, but he said, I've already had offers worth three times the amount that I'm getting paid through Young Living to go to their company. And he said, but I will be staying with Young Living. And uh, that was way before there was anything going on with Gary and being sick and that kind of stuff. I mean, he's had issues, but, you know before the near death you know, issues, right? So um, I have just valued that information um, that he shared with me that day. And especially with uh, the Young's uh, sons and uh, being of age, they are, they've been there the whole time with their daddy's practices and they know exactly uh, what their dad wants and their mom wants. 
And I feel very comfortable that they will continue on in their father's footsteps. Um, and they already know so much of what he does and how he did it because they've been living on the farm and working with them the, his, their whole life. So that's really exciting. Okay, the question is, do I know how long uh, Ninja Red will be unavailable in Canada? And I'm so sorry, but I don't, um, I don't have an answer. If someone has an answer on that, you, if you could please put that in the chats right now. I'm sorry for that. If you come to Michigan, I'll order you some. Uh, but I don't know. Um, okay. So any other questions that I could help out with? Regarding uh, Young Living's values and moral standards or Gary Young. I think it's horrible people are still talking about him when he's dead. Um, and uh, that man, whenever he's, he, I don't know, he has got a photographic memory. Whenever I've seen him, he always knows my name. And he's always spent, um, you know, time with anyone who comes up to him to talk to him. And like, you're the only person in the room and to totally help you with your situation. And he had so much discernment to know if you were BSing or if this is a spiritual issue or a nutritional issue. I mean, just amazing. Um, the one thing <clears throat> when it, uh, there's a question, you know, when per the FDA, essential oils are underneath the Cosmetic Act, and there's no regulation for the cos for cosmetics, and therefore essential oils as well. So whenever a bottle says 100% pure, per the FDA, only 5% has to be a essential oil, a pure oil, they say, right? And the rest of it can be ethyl alcohol, propylene glycol, or mineral oil. So 5% pure means it has to be lavender oil, um, but is it therapeutic? Was it harvested at the right time? Um, you know, all the different questions like that play into this. So that's not right. So this, I don't like to say pure when I'm talking about young living. I like to say therapeutic because our seed to seal process, we have control from the seed all the way to the seal and if it's not going to be sealed in that bottle and then put on the shelves for you to purchase, unless it is therapeutic grade by young living standards, which are above the standards of the regular market for essential oils. Once again, to really break that down, um, if we weren't going by a higher standard, then we would not have sold our own helichrysum oil to somebody else and not be able to give it to our own uh, downline, our people, uh, their members, uh, to purchase. But it was not therapeutic. It's not going to go do what it's supposed to do. And once again, you just got to go research uh, either in your reference material or in um, you know Google what helichrysum does because that is an oil that everyone should have at their house for the properties in which it. Um, has in it. Okay. I have the five percent by the FDA is not made up. Um, and I, the problem is, is I I have links for all this stuff, and even for the American Cancer Society, how they say that um, only five to ten percent of all cancer is genetic. Uh, that's from the horse's mouth, which is the American Cancer Society. But the FDA and the American Cancer Society, I swear, they have people who go change their location of their information on their website on a regular basis. So I have this page full of the links directly to those places that no longer work. And then when someone's adamant about finding that information or if I'm teaching on it, I have to go find it again and find that page. And so that's why I make screenshots of it with the American Cancer Society because um, I know what it says um, and it's, it says it on their site, but they make it very difficult to find. And so they constantly keep changing the location of that information so the same link does not work. Um, but you can go read that through the FDA, the essential oils underneath the Cosmetic Act, 
there is no regulation on cosmetics or essential oils unless you insist on it, like Young Living has, to make it be like our vitality uh, blend. And you know, and I still have bottles from 10, 12 years ago. So, I mean, I have the whole label there that whatever oil was, it says dietary supplement on there, and you should have the little nutritional label right on the bottle. But now we have to have two labels, uh, which makes it nice for being able to carry small bottles with you and your purse and when you're traveling and that kind of stuff. But now we have two labels. They're exactly the same oil, but different label. One's for internal and one's for topical and aromatic. So we have to teach that, of course, um, but it is what it is. Let's see here. Yeah, okay, let's see. Okay, question about that. Do you know what they did with what was sold? Um, Young Living uh, sold the Hillocrism oil to another um, essential oil company. And they bought it um, and then turned around and sold it as therapeutic. Because I actually know who bought it, but I won't say. Yeah, I like the link for what the FDA said about the percent on the container. I have found that before through the FDA, but uh, recently, it was like a month ago, someone asked me about it, and I went to go pull up my previous links, and it's not there anymore, and I just haven't had the time to go research that again. Uh, nevertheless, all you have to do is do your own smell and taste test, and you will be able to tell it's not the same completely. So if someone's questioning it or questioning you on it, just have them bring their oil over and do a smell and taste test. And it, I guarantee you it will solve the problem. Um, another good one, and maybe it's changed now, but I have the images of it, Deuterra's uh, peppermint oil freezes in the freezer. And essential oil should not freeze. But I put it in the freezer at an angle like this. Well, first of all, the first time I froze, it was on accident. Because uh, I was teaching a class, I had a whole bunch of oils of different kinds and uh, Young Living. I was up north in Grayling. I didn't bring in all the bags. It was very cold that night. When I went to go get everything in the morning, uh, the oil was frozen. And, like, they have, like, a clear bottle, right? So you can sort of see through it. And the oil was, like, frozen at this angle. And I was like, what in the world's going on here? I was like, how could that be? So, um uh, and so I had contacted Duterra and talked to Dr. Talked to Duterra and actually talked to one of their uh, little scientist guys there. And um, he said that was normal. I'm like, okay, if that's normal, then why is it only peppermint? Because I put, your, I, I put a, a variety of oils after that in the freezer, Young Living and Duterra and another company. And I'll just talk about Duterra right now. But Duterra's peppermint froze. And so I'm like, um, I don't think so. But anyhow, when you tasted theirs, it tasted like a, like a peppermint candy cane. It had like vanilla and peppermint. And there's a lot of stories behind that, whatever. But nevertheless, um, essential oils are not supposed to freeze. So that's not right. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me see what this link is here for us. This is archive.org web. I guess we can go here and try to find, I'll, I'll have to look what this is, but Wayback Machine. Huh, I guess you can put your link in here and then find your old page. Hmm, that'll be interesting, I'll try that. Thank you, uh, Pam, for putting that in there for me. Okay, um, if you want to, you're welcome to unmute yourself, or if you have any other questions, um, if you could state them now so we can uh, try to wrap this up. And if someone comes to you with a problem, if you don't know what the answer is, then please say, you know what, uh, I haven't heard this before, let me go double check with someone who would know better, uh, or maybe know more because they've been in longer, or whatever the case may be. Um, like, don't share this stuff all over. Like, someone just shared something on my page the other day that was sort of frustrating um, and shared it to, like, five of our pages. 
and it was actually about the um, FDA warning label to or warning letter to essential oil companies, which was Young Living and Deuterra. And I mean, that was like six or seven years ago, but it happened to be the first time she saw it. She didn't look at the date. And so she put it on our public Facebook pages. So now the whole world is seeing this and now they're like concerned, like what's going on. And so that does not look good at all. So if you see something, the worst thing in the world you can do is share it and say, oh my gosh, this is so scary. What's this about? Because you're going to create this pandemonium fear, whatever. And most likely it's a BS story. Um, one girl said that um, she used Young Living um, oils and it created this huge rash and she showed a picture of it and all this kind of stuff. Dear Lord, it was like a virus that spread through Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And then when you really found out what happened, because um, when you go research her, she wasn't even a Young Living member. She was a Deuterra member. And she used a uh, diffuser that had moldy water in it. And I mean, the whole story was like crazy for the whole scenario, what happened. But um, she claimed it was Young Living when actually it wasn't Young Living Well, When she got contacted, she said, well, I wasn't sure if it was Young Living or Deuterra. And then when she got pressed, she said, well, it was actually Deuterra. But she you know, was claiming it was Young Living. And then Young Living followed, uh, was, uh, had the lawyers contact her and say, if you don't cease and desist, we will slant, you know, sue you for slander because all the stuff she was saying and if you, the thing is that she thought she was smart because she had it on this one page. But if you start researching her website um, and uh, her other links on her Facebook page, she was already talking crap about Young Living a year before that. So how could you accidentally put Young Living on your body when you hate it so bad? So, I mean, there was like, there was this whole story be, uh, behind it that ended up not being truthful. But of course, everyone shared it like wildfire, and then everyone got fear, just like the whole thing with oils and cats, which is totally not true. Um, I don't think Nikki's on here right now, but I know she's used tea tree with her cat, um, and many people have, but everything is common sense with what we need to do with different things and how and why. But you know that got spread out like wildfire, and then everyone's afraid that their cat's gonna die overnight when it was just uh, a fear-based post and um, not backed with um, good solid information and practices of how someone does something. So, um, you know, we, before we share it, we need to really investigate it and try to squash it before it gets gigantic and then we have to deal with uh, a whole mess. But most people um, are against natural anything. When I talk to people about not drinking soda or not drinking coffee or not eating McDonald's or a better choice would be essential oils, you know, for diffusing or instead of um, don't use your Glad plugins anymore, there is always resistant. People don't want to necessarily change their ways. Um, and if you talk about diet and health and nutrition and chemical awareness, um, they don't want to feel bad about what they're doing, so they just choose to tell you you're a quack and it's not right um, instead of embracing it. And I know that because I was one of those people. So before all this, I used to eat fast food six days a week and drink soda and only took prescriptions and did everything worldly. Um, but I have thankfully learned uh, the truth and all that um, and haven't done any of those things since. So that's exciting. Okay, um, Young Living is a lifestyle, um, and it's not all about Young Living. We still have to get sleep, and we gotta drink water, we should be exercising, we should be looking at our emotional state and our mindset, and be in a place for forgiveness and gratitude and thankfulness. Um, and so there's so much more, but uh, when you get to go to a convention or a farm or wherever, or these events or Young Living events, uh, big or small, it is just so nice to be with people who are like-minded and really be able to see the benefit of um, being with such people and not the resistance. So stay true to yourself and what you believe. If your family's not on board yet with you and you just stopped drinking soda and they're still drinking soda, 
you know, uh, pray about it, use cinnamon bark, use peppermint, drink something you like, you know, vitality, of course, right? Help to keep your um, cravings down and your taste buds refreshed so you don't want those things. And um, stay true to yourself because most time people are looking at you to see if this is like a little fad for you or if you're really steadfast. So um, I'm just thankful, uh, you know, we haven't compromised in 12 years with any of those things. And so I am pretty die hard with this lifestyle of living chemical free and as natural as possible. So I hope this call was a, a blessing to you. And uh, someone who just put this, Catherine, thank you, Catherine. Uh, just put that Young Living has 273 oils. There's 124 blends, 96 singles, 46 vitality and seven roll-ons and then seven collections. And of course, there's so much more on that. We have over 600 products uh, that can be used for so many, um, you know, targeted health for skin, for children, for infants, for animals. Um, everyone in our family gets the same thing. My girlfriend Julie gives her dogs Ninja Red. They think if there's makeup, there's just so many options that Young Living has that's chemical free. Um, that is just amazing. And we all have the ability to partake in it and, and, do, and be as chemical free and healthy as possible. So for as long as that we're here on earth, we'll still be able to walk and talk and think and uh, get dressed by ourselves, right? Okay, I thank you guys all for your time. I hope this was a blessing. And if you ever have any questions, please let me know. And uh, just have a fantastic night. Thank you so much.